Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So in the last video, we went down to Florida and picked up some new chicken processing equipment. Well, today's the day. We're gonna put that stuff to use. We're gonna get about uh, 100 birds out of our um, meat bird flock that we've got going. I think there's about 300 out there right now. We're gonna get about 100 of those, process them today. We're gonna give this equipment a, uh, a little bit of a test run. So we're gonna see how it does. Real quick, shout out to our uh, folks that support us over on Patreon. Y'all are gonna wanna hang around. We're gonna do a special video just for you. There's, there's some stuff that we just can't show on YouTube because of community guidelines, monetization policies, and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna do a special uh, video over on Patreon showing a piece of this project that we can't show on YouTube proper. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll post a link in the description down below uh, for our Patreon. But anyway, come along with us. Let's get these birds loaded up. We'll get the equipment set up. We got some help coming. Um, let's work through this today, see how it goes. We'll talk about it at the end, how everything went, and uh, we'll see if this improves our efficiency when it comes time to process meat chickens. Y'all hang out for a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do today, we're going to process some of these Freedom Ranger color yields. Now, these are our meat birds. These birds are about 12 weeks old. Well, actually, they are 12 weeks old today. Today, we're going to be pulling out the biggest birds that we've got, and that's primarily going to be the roosters. So keep in mind, when you're buying straight-run chickens, your roosters are going to get a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. If you want a variety of sizes, you can process them all at the same time. Um, we're just a little bit short on help today, so we're only going to do, I think we're going to do about 100. So, me and Newman have got 10 crates. There's Newman. We've got 10 crates. We're going to put 10 birds in there. The reason we put 10 birds in, it's just a humane thing to do. We don't overcrowd these crates. Um, so let's go through each of these tractors. We're going to pull out, like I say, about 100. We're going to, we're going to start with probably try to get about the 10 biggest ones in each one. That'll probably work out pretty good. But let's dig in here and see what we can find. But we're looking for these big, meaty birds that are ready to go today. All right, so a couple quick tips for you, those of you that are going to be processing your own birds. Number one, pull feed off of your chickens about 12 hours before you process. We came out, pulled the feeders out, just set them out in front of them last night, about 8 o'clock. Actually, it was about 9 o'clock because it's close to dark. And then, here's the big tip. Newman, show them. This is the biggest help that you're going to have when it comes to chicken catching time. Move your chickens forward onto a new patch of grass. That gives them something to do, keeps them busy, and it gets you out of the manure when you're trying to catch. Because if we go back here and look, you don't want to be sliding around. I mean, it's not bad. That's good, Newman. You don't want to be sliding around in that, catching those birds in that poop. So just roll your chickens forward to a new spot and then catch them. JW showed up. Johnny's here today. Hey, Johnny. Hello. All right. Gonna get started. I got it. I
All right, so let's talk about how the setup's gonna flow here. So we brought the birds in and they're sitting right here next to the nice new rotary dispatch station. So it'll be a real quick move from over here and JW will probably end up standing about right here so that he can pull a bird, put it over in here, dispatch it, and then we're done. So then they'll come from here and they're gonna go into the scalder. So this is the new scalder that we just got. The thing that we learned this morning was it heats up faster. Heats up fast. That's real not. Quick. It's got a huge burner on. Yeah, it. it's less than an hour. Yeah. So it, this, we put a top on. This. Yeah, we do. We always do put a top on. I take a piece of this foam board insulation, just lay it on top. Helps keep the heat in. They do speed up a little bit quicker. We add a little bit of dish detergent here. Breaks the surface tension of the water. We get better water to skin contact, and that helps the feathers free up a little bit easier. So this is the scalder. You got the plucker over here, right next to the scalder. So they're going to come out. We're going to drop them in here. We'll flip the switch boom we're plucking chickens once they're done here they're going to come out of here into this dunk tank we're still going to add some ice here we're going to put some ice in here so this is where the birds will go from there coming up here to the evisceration table so this is the new evisceration table that we've got you got the rail on there so that the birds don't slide off and then we got a center spot here to be dropping offal and uh any other uh, stuff that we cut off heads and that sort of thing so all that stuff will just go down in there once the birds are eviscerated, they're going to come over here into this dunk tank. And this is going to, we're going to add ice to this, aren't we? Yeah. So this will have some ice added to it. They'll sit in here until they come over to the um, cut up. And then from the cut up station, we've got our band saw here. We'll be cutting. How are you going to cut these up? You're going to cut the backbone out or are you going to saw it out? Um, I don't know quite yet. So we still got to figure that piece out. We'll probably cut, we'll probably cut one side with the knife and then do the rest of it with the yeah, that'll make it a whole lot quicker on it. Get cut up, cut up parts and pieces will go over here, breast will go in one, leg thigh cords will go in one, and then wings. Wings will go in wings, backs, that kind of thing will go in another one. From there, um, they'll start being packaged. And over here we got our packaging stuff. Where's our packaging stuff? They're going this way. I'm not paying attention. They'll come over here into the packaging. We'll package them up into the bags. So after we get them packaged, they're going to come over here to the vacuum sealers. We got our nice big vac master here. How many can you do in here at a time? Three or four. You can do three or four in there at a time. And then we've got our smaller one. We can do one package here at a time. I'll post a link in the description down below for these things. They are on Amazon. If you're doing chickens at scale, and we're not talking 30 or 40 for yourself, you're doing chickens at scale. These are the trick, aren't they? If you're doing cut-ups, yeah. If you're doing, if you're doing whole birds, you don't want to put them in these. Yeah, these don't work good for whole birds. Whole birds, we put them in the shrink bags and dunk them. And we've actually got a product coming we're going to show on another video. Um, some new shrink bags. A little teaser there. American made. American made shrink bags. We'll show those on another video. Again, post a link in the description down below for this. From there, they'll come over here. They'll get weighed. Got our little scale here. Um, certified scale. Um, we'll put the labels on them. We've got all the proper information on there. Safe handling instructions, name, address, phone number, weight, price, all that kind of thing. Uh, we've got our PL 90-492 label on there. Got to have that. State of North Carolina says we've got to have it. They'll get labeled, weighed. We'll put them in the boxes. We're going to record what we're doing here so that we can put that in the spreadsheet and figure out our um, feed to weight, uh, our feed to sellable weight conversion how much feed it took to get um sellable product and then they go in the freezer now folks ask us all the time how long do you leave them in the chill tank or how long do you chill them before you put them in the freezer we just go straight to the freezer yeah we tried it both ways um we cooked two birds one that had been chilling and then one that had been frozen and we really couldn't tell the difference in the tenderness of the meat so yeah, we just can't tell a big difference. We so just go straight to the freezer. We just go straight. We've got all our help here. We just go with it. Yeah, we just we got to move. So there it is. That's the setup. Got everything out, ready to go. Uh, Sondra, myself, JW, Newman, Johnny's here today. So we got a crew of five. We're undertaking a hundred birds. We're gonna see how that goes. But here's the thing about it. You just can't pick a nicer atmosphere. This looks a whole lot better than the inside of a poultry processing plant i won't call any names but this has got to be nicer than inside of a big smelly plant with hundreds of thousands of birds and just nasty all right 
Let's get to work. The alder's working really good. We've had, we're counting rotations instead of time because the timer's messed up on it, but we've got a new timer coming. Um, but this seems to be working fine. We're at 140 degrees for about 90 seconds. And then we're coming out of the scalder over here into the plucker. And this thing's working really nice. This is, it's a bigger plucker, um, but it's doing a good job. One of the problems that we're running into on these birds these, corner, these uh, Freedom Ranger color yield have got a lot of feathers and they're dark. And they're a little more difficult to pluck than a Cornish cross. I would imagine we probably could scald for a little less time, pluck for a little less time um, to get a good scald and pluck on these. Now, we are not showing the, the dispatch of the chickens. But if you're a Patreon member, we're going to post a link to a video over on Patreon specifically showing how we dispatch a bird. So if you want to know how to do that, come over and join our Patreon. That video is going to be uploaded over there. But for our Patreon members, you're going to be able to see that. That's going to be a bonus video that you guys are going to get. Um, we appreciate all the support over on Patreon. So this seems to be working good. I can finish cleaning two to Newman's one. <laughs> yeah, he's, he says, I'm meticulous. We appreciate that, Newman. But uh, these birds are looking good. Um, we're going to get a couple more. We're working on refining the process. The process is what we got to re... We got to figure that out with this new equipment. But we'll get there. How are they looking? Looking good. What do you think about them? I like, th I like this a lot right here. What, what part's that? Uh, that the feet are already cleaned and pretty much ready to go. Big advantage there, we do sell a lot of feet. Um, with our old scalder, you know, we were clipping those birds in by the ankles and then dipping them so the, the feet never got in the water. With this scalder, the whole bird is dunked and so the feet are being scalded so they're super easy to peel. We sell a lot of feet to folks that want to make a like a clear broth. Uh, and then we've got a couple of customers that buy these, dry them, and use them as uh, pet treats. So. Nothing goes to waste. Man, they do look good. Look at them. Clean and white, pretty. Livers, hearts, let me tell you. If you're doing chickens and you're throwing your livers and your hearts away, you're doing yourself a disjust, an injustice. We sell the dickens out of livers. I've got one customer that will buy all the livers that we've got. And then a lot of folks will buy the hearts for um, raw dog food. Last pack. All right, so we just finished up, Was it, it was 100, 90, 98. JW said it was 98. We just finished up 98 chickens. 
And we ended up doing all of these chickens as cut-ups. Now, when we do cut-ups, we put two breasts in a pack, two leg thigh cords in a pack, and then 20 wings to the pack. So, you know, that, that's a lot of, that's handling a whole lot of, whole lot of product. And using this new equipment, <clears throat> we thought it'd be kind of interesting just to sort of talk about how the day went. Yeah. And what we thought about the, what we thought about everything. So, you, what, you, your first impression, what do you think, how things worked out today? Oh, I think they went about average, actually. Yeah, um, I'm tired. I mean, you know, there, there were five of us, um, Sandra, myself, J.W. Newman, and then Johnny came over to help. And all of these guys are, are fairly experienced in, in what we do. So it wasn't like we had a bunch of, a bunch of rookies and had to do a lot of teaching. But, man, it was a long day, wasn't it? It was a long day. What time is it? I don't even know what time it is. It's, it's 5 o'clock, and we started, we started early. We started, well, we started about 9.30. So it's been a, I mean, it's been a full day. We did stop for lunch, but, it's, but it has been a full day getting all this done. Um, I guess one thing, so the, the processing equipment. So the, JW liked the, uh, the kill station. We did figure out that the cones are a little bit too shallow. So we took our old cones and stuck them down into that rotisserie and that seemed into, we stuffed our old cones into the cones on the rotisserie. That seemed to work pretty good. Yeah. So we're, we're going, we need to get two more of the Featherman cones to go down in there. They're just too shallow. They were just a little bit too shallow. Um, the scalder worked good. Um, we don't have the timer for the scalder. Uh, we ordered it, it should, it's probably here in the mailbox. But we were counting rotations. That seemed to work out pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, the scalder got hot quick. Yeah, I really like that. It got hot in less than an hour. Yeah, so it didn't take long to get the scalder up to temperature. Um, and then the plucker, the plucker worked great. Um, plenty of power there. We were doing four birds at a time. We could have done six without any problem. It did awesome. It did awesome, yeah. Had to go back and manip had, we had to go back and adjust a little bit on our scald times a couple times. Um, because whenever you put those birds in there, it'll cool the water down, won't it? When you first start it, will yeah. yeah. When you first start it, will. And then, if you do much chicken processing, you know what I'm talking about when I say if, if you've got one person running the scalder, if somebody else takes over, there's going to be another screw up because they have to learn it too. Yeah. Um, whoever dials that scalder in for the day needs to be the one that stays with it. Yep, they do need to kind of stay with it because somebody comes over and you don't know how long, they don't know how long, typically don't know how long you've been scalding and that sort of thing, so it gets a little, it gets a little janky, but it ended up working out pretty good. So one thing I did want to say, we had some folks reach out to us about buying the old equipment, even though we said something on the, on the video about, um, no, we weren't selling the, we weren't going to sell it. Um, and I think they had about a hundred birds and it was, it was two individuals. That's a, it's going to, you know, even at, even in whole birds, that's going to be a lot of work. So you need to make sure if you're getting into this thing and you don't have any experience that you've got some folks around you that can help. And um, don't try to do them all in one day. Yeah, don't try to do them all in one day. You'll kill yourself. Um, but we maxed out. We done, we couldn't have done any more today, could we? No, that's probably too many. But if we'd have had, what, maybe two, three more people? Two more. Two more experienced folks, we could have handled... It's amazing how just a couple of people that know what they're doing can increase your production exponentially and you can get a lot of work done, a lot more work done in the same amount of time. Yep. So, good investment. Glad we spent the money. I am. Yeah, me too. Me too. And those birds look good. They look awesome. Those birds look really nice. Twelve color, Freedom Ranger color yield, 12 weeks old. Um, they look nice. Good fat layer. Good looking birds. Real good looking birds. So... Like I always say, please keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.